Hello, and welcome to the third video in the First Person Shooter with Unity's new input system tutorial series. In this video, we will cover rapid firing, creating an option for rapid fire in the inspector, and a reloading mechanism. Just before we start, these videos take a long time for me to plan, script, record, and edit, so if you could just take a second to hit like and show your support, that would be really appreciated. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing, as only 7% of you currently are, and every new subscriber means a lot to me. Without further ado, let's get started. Here I have opened the project from the previous video, which this tutorial will be following off from. If you haven't seen that yet, a card linking to it should be popping up in the corner about now. To create the basic rapid firing, I'll first open up our gun script, so double click on that, and we'll need a new using tag at the top. This will be using system.collections. I'll add a new variable, this will be a serialized field, float, and this will be the fire rate. I'll set this default to 5. This means that every second we will shoot 5 bullets. Now at the very bottom, I'll create a new function. This will be public i enumerator, and I'll call this rapid fire. Inside here, I'll create an infinite loop with while true, and then say shoot to call the function that we wrote in the last tutorial. Underneath this, I'll say yield return new, wait for seconds, and then for the seconds, I'll say 1 divided by the fire rate. Now we can go to the input manager script, and again, add the using system.collections at the top. I'll create two new functions underneath the update, and these will be void start firing and void stop firing. These will need another variable, which I'll create at the top. This will be type of coroutine, and I'll call this fire coroutine. Now in the start firing function, I can set the fire coroutine equal to start coroutine gun dot rapid fire. Then in the stop firing coroutine, I'll say if the fire coroutine is not equal null, then we'll say stop coroutine and we'll pass in the fire coroutine. Finally, in the awake function, I'll replace shoot.performed with shoot.started. This will be called when we first press the mouse button, and then we should call start firing. I'll copy and paste this line and call shoot.cancelled for when we release the mouse button, and then I'll call stop firing. We should be able to return to the editor now to test it out. I'll hit play, then hold down the mouse button and hover over the cube. You can see that the rapid fire worked. One issue with our current script, however, is that we are calling yield return new wait for seconds every time we shoot. This can get quite expensive, so let's fix that by storing it in a variable. In the gun script, I'll create a new variable. The type will be wait for seconds, and I'll call this rapid fire wait. Now in the awake method, at the end, I'll set rapid fire wait equal to a new wait for seconds, 1 divided by the fire rate. Now in the rapid fire coroutine, I can simply say yield return rapid fire wait. This allows the engine to just calculate the wait for seconds once, rather than every time we shoot. If I quickly return to the editor to test it out, you will see that it works exactly the same. Now let's work on making the rapid fire optional. To do this, return back to the gun script, and at the top, let's create a new variable. This will be a serialized field, type of boolean, and I'll call this rapid fire. By default, I'll set this to false. Now in the rapid fire coroutine, I'll say if rapid fire, and then copy and paste our entire while block into this if statement. Then I'll say else, so if rapid fire is false, I'll simply call shoot. 
And finally, we have to remember to put yield return null, as this function expects an i enumerator as a return type. Let's return back to the editor now. Expand our player and the main camera, and you'll see our gun here. We now have an option for rapid fire. If I leave it unchecked and hit play, you'll see that holding down the mouse button does nothing. However, I can hit escape now to show the mouse cursor. Check the rapid fire box. And now the rapid fire is working. Great. Now let's work on making a reload mechanism. I'll return back into the gun script. And at the top, I'll create another variable. This will be a serialized field, type of int, and I'll call this max ammo. Underneath this, I'll also create an int current ammo. In the awake function, I'll set the current ammo equal to the max ammo. And then every time we shoot, I'll set current ammo minus minus, which is the same as saying current ammo is equal to current ammo minus one. Now let's create a new function to determine whether we actually can shoot or not. I'll set its return type to be a boolean, and I'll call this can shoot. In here, I'll simply say bool enough ammo is equal to current ammo is greater than zero. In other words, if our current ammo is greater than zero, this variable will be true. Then I'll return enough ammo. While it seems pointless to make a whole function for this right now, it will be useful in the future when we add more functionality to our weapons. Now let's make a reload function, and for that we need a reload duration. So back at the top, I'll create more variables. First, serialize field, float, reload, time, and then again to save performance, a wait for seconds, and I'll call this reload wait. In the awake method, I'll set reload wait equals to a new wait for seconds, this time of the reload time. Now let's create a new coroutine for reloading. Underneath rapid fire, I'll say I enumerator reload if the current ammo is equal to the max ammo, make sure to use a double equal sign, then we'll simply yield return null, as we don't have anything to reload. If that is not the case, I'll first print reloading, then yield return reload wait, to wait for the time that it takes us to reload. Then I'll set our current ammo equal to the max ammo, and finally print finished reloading. The last thing we have to edit here is our rapid fire coroutine. I'll clean this up a little by rewriting the whole thing. We'll start off with if can shoot, then we'll simply call shoot. Now if we are also rapid firing, so if rapid fire, then while can shoot, we'll yield return our rapid fire wait and then we will call shoot. This means that once can shoot is false, we'll break out of this loop automatically. And then if that is true, I'll automatically start the coroutine reload. Now if can shoot was false at the start, so else, I'll simply start coroutine reload. The script should be finished now, so let's return back to the editor, and then I'll actually drag our damage all script onto our ground, just so that we can see when we're shooting it. Select our ground in the hierarchy, and change its max health to some arbitrarily large number, since we don't actually want to destroy it. I'll also set its hit effect to the concrete, for the same as our cube. Next, I'll select our gun. I'll check rapid fire, change its reload time to 3 seconds, its max ammo to 12, and its fire rate to 7, then hit play. 
If I hold down the left mouse button, you can see that the rapid fire is working, and we just ran out of ammo, so we see reloading in the console, and now it's finished reloading, so we can shoot again. That's it for this tutorial. If you're enjoying this series, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.